leave a story to tell to the nations that shall This morning, we again, Heavenly Father. We again, Heavenly Father. We again, Heavenly Father. We again, Heavenly Father. But we can't even see the amount that get around, around us, Heavenly Father. So we are much grateful to be in your present. It's your promise. Great to our three year candidate. You will be in the midst, Heavenly Father. We are surrounded. By your present, Heavenly Father, we thank you. We thank you for your forgiveness, Heavenly Father. We thank you for your cleansing blood, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father, thank you so much. Heavenly Father, we will find a place for a thick and suffering in your hand, Heavenly Father. We can't the lifting up to William's family in your hand. Bailey's family in your hand, Heavenly Father. The Richard family, Heavenly Father. Your grandma, Elder Ken, Sister Carol, my prayer partner, Elder Pacheco, Heavenly Father. We thank you, Lord, for bringing back all dear brother, thief, and son from this long journey, Heavenly Father. You have went through with your protection, and everything went through safe and sound. So we just want to give you thanks again, Heavenly Father, knowing how loving you are, Heavenly Father. Heavenly Father. Touch the Father, Lord, I pray, Heavenly Father, that each and every one that opened those books, Heavenly Father, will feel an igniting spirit in them, Father, to go forward in your name, Heavenly Father, and your strength. And they will share it with others, Heavenly Father. And those who might not yet open it, Heavenly Father, Lord, may someday something in, ignite in them to open this book and to read, Heavenly Father. Lord, I want to pray, Sister Laris and her mother, Heavenly Father, Sister Rose, Sister Maxine, and her brother, Heavenly Father, Sister Activia, and her family, and her husband, Heavenly Father, Sister Sharon, Sister Jackie. Lord, the list goes on and on. Sister Raquel, as she, as she requests prayer for her brother, she's born about her brother who's out there, Heavenly Father, or a family, or a church family, or a young ones, Heavenly Father, or children, or friends and associated, Heavenly Father. But I'm just a Jenny, but I've burned on Heavenly Father. Lord, the list goes on and on. And those who might just come on, Brother Joseph and his family, Heavenly Father. I myself want to place myself in the hand, Heavenly Father, and not sleep this night, Heavenly Father. But praise God, I'm here this morning at your feet, Heavenly Father. So Lord, we thank you, Heavenly Father. And now this morning, Heavenly Father, I pray you and night to my servant lips, Heavenly Father. Bless our ears. And may we not leave the way we come on, but we'll have a closer walk and a deeper understanding of who you are, Heavenly Father. The Lord, open our eyes, open our ears, Heavenly Father. If I do pray in the precious name of our Lord Jesus Christ. First of all, coming King, we thank you, Lord, for hearing and answer our prayer. 
And Lord, most of all, remove every distraction, Heavenly Father, that our mind, our mind, that me will be rest, and you are showing word, Heavenly Father, and we keep our mind fixed, Heavenly Word, Heavenly Father. God, Lord, you are coming soon and very soon in the year for your children who have accepted you as their Lord, their Lord and Savior, Heavenly Father, to be with you and our vacation home and for eternity, Lord. We thank you and we praise you in Jesus' precious name. Thank you for your words of Christ. Amen. Amen. By himself, some God. When Pilate heard the uh, therefore heard that saying, he was more afraid, and went again into the judgment hall and said unto him, to Jesus, Whence art thou come? But Jesus gave him no answer. Then Pilate said unto him, Speakest thou not unto me? Knowest not that I have power? to crucify thee and have power to release thee. Jesus answered, Thou canst have no power at all against me, except I were, it was given thee from above. Therefore he that delivered me unto thee has the greatest sin. Thank you, but Sorry, finished, Brother Al no, no, it's finish your thought. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Thank you, Brother Joe. Thank you, Brother Alvin. So, once again, we are in our monthly series, Free Your Mind, and this month's thought and focus is Unshackled. Our topic is No Power Over Me, as we just heard from Jesus himself in John chapter 19 and verse 11. So, Again, harking back to last week and how Brother Joel just ended, we talked about Christ in his unshackledness, his freedom from institutionalism of the Jews, where he became his own person, not beholden to them. And as I said last week, I'll say again in this presentation, in this lesson, that what Christ had he gave to us. Just mentioned that a little bit ago. And so he was in freedom. We looked at, he says, if the Son therefore set you free, you're free indeed. And we see this unshackled mind in him, not bothered, not worried about whether or not they felt comfortable with him saying, I am the Messiah. I am the fulfillment of this prophecy. And we saw in the reading where he was turned away from the institutions, the churches, the organizations of his day, and rather than trying to fight for position, rather than trying to conform, well, if you let me in, I promise I'll go easy on the claiming to be the Son of God thing. No, sir. No, ma'am. He did not. And here again this morning, we see how he asserts his freedom. Last week, it was against the religious leaders. Today, it's against the governor of Judea, Pilate. And you would think, you would think that any of us in that position would try to worm our way 
out with some nice fancy words. And remember, remember one of the things that we've talked about recently is the importance of letting God be the one who tells us what to say. Here, we just saw that Jesus answered him, nothing, not at all. I forgot to mention Brother Alvin, just in case you wanted to follow along. We're just going to be reading a brief passage from Great Controversy, page 254, paragraph 3, to 255, paragraph 1. So that's 254, paragraph 3, to 255, Great Controversy, if you want to follow along. So, this week we are looking at no power over me. You see, as Brother Joel just said in his summation of that scripture, when you realize who you are and who you are, not even, not even the highest official in the land who has, as soon as he said, power to free you, power to, to make you his prisoner, once you realize that, even death itself, even death itself has no power over you. And we'll see that in the reading in a little bit. But I definitely want to share with us, brethren, family, as we get closer to the understanding of that glorious awakening, that third day experience that God has wanted to give us for the sick one to think, we must come to the understanding, family, that the things that cause us to be afraid should have no power over us. I give you a small, small, small scenario, right? But in the grand scheme of things, it's, it's big. So you use your light, your phone, your all these utilities for the month, right? And then when the bill comes, you don't run to the mailbox knowing it's bill time to rip open your bill to say, yeah, my bill's here. There's a trepidation. Man, how much are you going to charge me? I wonder how much I spent, right? You know, it, it's no happy day, bill day, right? But many persons, rather than taking a nonchalant attitude, well, I use the thing, might as well pay for it. It's some kind of dread, some kind of trepidation that it's like they don't even want to open the bill. They don't even want to see the bill. And that's just on a small scale, brethren. Could you imagine you're out at sea, Brother Alvin? You're out at sea, Brother Joel. And the waves and the wind are boisterous. And you're just a hair's breath away from death. And not even that. Is a worry to you because again you know that your name is registered in heaven you know in whom you have believed and you're persuaded that he is able to keep that which you've committed unto him again that day power said don't you know that i have power to crucify you and have power to release you jesus said unto him you couldn't have no power at all against me except you were given to you from above. Now I want us to understand that, brethren. Again, going back to Job, we talked about Job recently. Notice what had to happen. Job had to be released unto Satan's power because unless, unless Job himself takes himself out of, from under God's protection, no power on earth to move him. No power on earth to move him from out of God's almighty hand. And so he had nothing to fear, nothing to worry. And brethren, look at Job's attitude even in the midst of all of that. Not even the death of his children, the, the decimation of his livelihood, none of that moved him. He was moved to worship. So we begin our reading for the week. And just for background, the reformers, John and Charles Wesley, they had just been ordained to gospel ministry and they were sent on their first overseas mission here to America because they're from England. And they, it was on the ship and they met up with members of the Moravian church from out of Germany. And so the narrative picks up with them having the encounter. If you know anything from reading about John Wesley in the Great Controversy, you know that his faith, even all the way through, was shaky until he had an encounter that really transformed him. Even in ministry, even as he was ministering, talking to people, his faith in God was as flimsy as wet paper. But, of course, as with all of us, God works with us. God knows the material that he's working with, and he works with us patiently. And so this was one of those teaching moments that he had as he experienced 
the attitudes of the Moravians. And I pray, brethren, that as we observe it through the reading, that we too will adopt their mentality. John and Charles Wesley, after being ordained to the ministry, were sent on a mission to America. On board a ship was a company of Moravians. Violent storms were encountered on the passage, and John Wesley, brought face to face with death, felt that he had not the assurance of peace with God. But the Germans, on the contrary, manifested a calmness and trust to which he was a stranger. Notice the language, and those words aren't just picked out of nowhere. That's exactly who he was, from the fact that he was literally plucked out of a burning building, his home as a child, the fact that he was saved, as the Bible says, a brand plucked out of fire. All of that did not make a deep, 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 deep impression upon him to have faith and trust in God enough, and yet to go through these different experiences to see that God is able, that God is there with him, that God is the God concerned with the little things as well as the big things. And it says in strong language, they, the Moravians, manifested a calmness and a trust in God, of course, to which he was a stranger. Says he, I had long before observed the great seriousness of their behavior, of their humility they had given continual proof by performing those servile offices for the other passengers which none of the English would undertake, for which they desired and would receive no pay, saying it was good for their proud hearts and their loving Savior had done much more for them. Praise God. And every day had given them occasion of showing a meekness which no injury could move. But listen to this. If they were pushed, struck, or thrown down, they rose again and went away. Brethren, consider what I just said. Talk about the supreme level of being on a attached to this world. You're just pushing a body that's going to decay anyway. You're just hitting a body that's going to decay anyway. You're just throwing down a body that's going to decay and be worm food any day, anyway. What care I for this? There's a life that measures with the life of God, which you cannot touch, right? And that is the thing that they made sure that they upheld every day. Goes on to say, Again, let me read that again. If they were pushed, struck, or thrown down, they rose again and went up their way. But no complaint was found in their mouth. There was now an opportunity of trying whether they were delivered from the spirit of fear. So, okay, it's one thing, as I just said, to be thrown down, to be hit, to be pushed. That's one thing, right? Just like Satan said to, to God about Job. Here, take away his livestock, take away his servants, take away his children even. Of course. He's going to have more children. He's going to have more livestock. He's going to have more this. But he only has one body. Let's, let's see how he trusts you. Let's see how he serves you if you touch his body. And so this storm came up on this fateful day. And would the Moravians now exercise the same calmness? Would they exercise the same trust? in God would what didn't occur with the words that person spoke in their actions would the stormy sea now have power over them there was now an opportunity of trying whether they were delivered from the spirit of fear as well as from pride, anger and revenge it was clear to Wesley that he had been delivered from pride, anger and revenge how about fear? In the midst of the psalms wherewith their service began, the sea broke over, split the mainsail in pieces, covered the ship, and poured in between the deck as in the great deep, as if in the great deep had already swallowed us up. A terrible screaming began among the English. The Germans calmly sung on. Isn't that what we talked about Tuesday morning? The power of singing, the power of praise and worship, on the heart of the believer, here we are again, confronted with that truth. The Germans calmly sung on. 
I asked one of them afterward, Were you not afraid? He answered, I thank God, no. I asked, But were not your women and children afraid? He replied, Mildly, Not our women and children. He said, No, our women and children are not afraid to die. You see, dear brethren, that's the secret of it. That's the secret. Once you realize that you have passed from death unto life, once you realize that your life is hid with Christ in God, once you realize that as you continue to set your affections on things above and on things on this earth, you truly, truly realize that that life which measures with the life of God, no human hand, no human invention, no human malice can touch. And therefore, we would repeat with the psalmist, what can man do unto me? But we have to get to a stage, brethren, where we fear no power. When we fear no power. Remember, Jesus told the disciples in Matthew 28, all power is given unto me in heaven and earth, right? And then in Acts 1, he turns around and says, I give you that power. See what I was saying earlier, Brother Joel? He says, I am omnipotent, and now I give you that omnipotent. That's, and it's only operative, operative through him. So in slight another answer to your question, Brother Joel, apart from Christ, we are goats, not lambs. And then finally, he says this, which we're going to quote in a little bit, you have power over it. Right? But before we get there, I want you to understand that Simon Magus, we know him from the book of Acts, after seeing Peter and the apostles performing these great miracles, he had a little money in his pocket. And so he said, hmm, if I pay these poor guys off, because surely they need some money to continue their ministry, if I just give them some gold and silver, surely they'll transfer to me at least one-tenth of this power to do these miracles. So he approaches Peter and says to him, what? Give me this power. And he offers him the bag of gold. And the Bible says what Peter says. Oh yeah, that's right, give me the money. Okay, here's the power. He said that? No. Of course not. Of course not, family. He did not. He did not. He said, Simon, you and your money perish together. But I want to understand that, as I said to Brother Joel earlier, the deeper significance of things, we only scratch the surface, and we need to go deeper. We need to do those deep dives that Brother Ivan talked about the other day. We need to go deep diving, because how, how is it with us? Do we slave labor over some green American dollar because we think that is what pays our bills and handles our resources, and as the Apostle Paul says, answers to all things? Is, 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 is that what we think in 2023? then in truth and in fact, we'll die of stress and cancer and all these ulcers and these things I mentioned the other day, in fact, the same Tuesday in devotion, because we would be worried about the wrong thing. Peter and the apostles didn't pay for the power. In fact, in fact, they couldn't even, couldn't even, prior to their Pentecost, come together and Scratch two rocks to get a fire going. So impotent were they that he couldn't even do that. And so if Simon Magus had had that experience with them, he would have gotten it. But he did not. The power that Christ gave to us in relation to our topic today, power over, he says, behold, Luke 10, 19 and 20, behold, I give you power the thread on serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And here goes the clincher. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. Family, as we start to wind down, I challenge you to accept this power. See, he says, I give it to you, right? But we have to receive it. He holds it out to us, but we have to receive it. We have to claim it. We have to know beyond a shadow of a doubt that there is no power on earth that rivals the impotence of God. And what God has for us, no one can take. What God meant for us, no one can go into his hands and snatch. We are the ones who choose to relinquish. We are the ones who choose to say no. We are the ones who choose. I'd rather have silver than Jesus. I'd rather have silver and gold than Jesus. Could you imagine persons would say that? But you see, my friends, 
they don't understand the power that they're giving up. That's why they would say that. I tell you, without reservation, that the richest person on this planet went to sleep last night and he could not have sweet sleep owning all the money in the world because the next morning he would be running to his phone and laptop or wherever to check to see if he's still rich, to see if nobody, to see if, as the Bible says, thieves did not break through or steal. Whereas, only reason Brother Alvin had that restless night was because of physical malady. Other than that, the peace of God rests upon him. Brethren, I tell you, understand me when I say this. This power, this power that God wants to give us, with it, we'll look at things differently. We'll become unshackled from this world. And no matter what a person says, no matter what a person does, brethren, as the book I'm reading says, we'll be on Dependable. We will be bulletproof against the things that people do. But the only way that that could happen is if we access the power, if we claim it, if we lay hold on it. Again, as we said earlier, once we realize who we are, who we are, I didn't finish the thought in Luke 10. Jesus says, notwithstanding, don't even make priority that scorpions and serpents and all these things you have power over. What does he say? And notwithstanding in this which right not, that the spirits are subject unto you. That's, what, that's the bottom line. The spirit, that's what we're talking about. We're not talking about things that you can see because in reality, they mean nothing. It's the power that's beyond these. It's if we were to pull back the veil and see the enemy. That's what we really wrestle again. And Jesus says, don't, work, that, that, don't even pay that in mind that you have power over those, but rather rejoice because your names are written in heaven. And at the end of the day, my brethren, that's the bottom line. That is the bottom line. That will make you really break those fetters, become truly unshackled, because once you are assured that your name is written in ink that you know for sure is black. And no power on earth can keep you or make you feel down. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, thank you so much for speaking to our hearts this morning. Lord, as we have come to the conclusion of another serious, serious experience, Father God, I want to say on the behalf of all of us that you will truly help us to realize the power that we have inside of Jesus Christ, the power that makes us not afraid of what man can do to us, the power that keeps us from retaliating, from complaining, the power that keeps us rejoicing in the Lord, and no matter what our circumstances are, we are strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. Heavenly Father, on this morning, I want to pray for my brethren, Lord God, that you bless them abundantly, Father, that you help them to realize, O oh Lord Jesus, that no matter what comes up against them, it will go down in flames because the word of this clear. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the word of God will raise up against them. Father, help us this morning to truly feel the chains that bind us to the system because we fear they have been broken and we have no reason to fear. We have no more reasons for torment. But the power of God has been granted to us and there's nothing greater. There's no one greater. There's no experience greater than knowing in whom we have believed and we are persuaded that he's able to keep us. So, Heavenly Father, on this preparation day morning, Father, we give ourselves to you for your safe keeping. Lord Jesus, take our hearts but we cannot keep them, keep them back in our arms. Thank you for the brand this morning. Pray, dear God, that as we go throughout this day, that you will go before us, make the rough path smooth, dear God, and be with us, and help us to remember that no matter what we go through, we go through 
to that. And ultimately, Heavenly Father, help us to be reminded that we have a heaven to win, a hell to shun, and a God to glorify. Thank you for being a prayer here and prayer answering God. On this morning, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, brethren, at this time, the floor 